everyone. Welcome to Medical Terminology. We are going to do another mini lesson, and this time we're going to talk about body cavities, abdominal regions, and abdominal quadrants. So this again is in uh, chapter three. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen on here. Give me just a second. Gotta love technology, right? All right. So there you should see my Jamboard. All right. And here we have the body cavities. So the body contains many cavities or spaces and these spaces contain organs. Some are hollow, but the ones that we're going to talk about today are um, the ones that contain organs. Some open to the outside of the body. The ones that we're talking about today do not open to the outside of the body. They're completely enclosed except for one and we'll get to that one. Um, the first one is the cranial cavity. That's this one up here. That's the cranial cavity. I'm going to change that to red. That's the cranial cavity up there. There's my little laser pointer. Um, the cranial cavity obviously contains the brain. The second cavity is this one right here. That is the uh, spinal cavity, contains the spinal cord. And the two cavities together are on the posterior aspect of the body. And those two cavities together on the dorsal aspect make up the dorsal cavity. You can see right here, the dorsal cavity. I don't like that line, I'm gonna make, get rid of that line. There we go. All right, so the cranial cavity contains the brain and the dorsal cavity contains the, I'm sorry, the, the vertebral cavity contains the spinal cord and those two cavities can together are the dorsal body cavity because they are posterior, if you think of the the vertebral column as the dividing line, they're behind it. So they together make up the uh, dorsal body cavity. Okay. Now, if we go to the front of the body, there's lots of cavities in the front of the body. So we'll start uh, superior and we'll work our way uh, inferior. Remember those directional terms that we talked about starting superior and work our way inferior. So up here, we have everything in the chest. The chest cavity is called the thoracic cavity. Note the spelling there. It's got a C-I-C -C at the end, thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity contains the heart, the lungs, and the great vessels. So everything up here in the chest is the thoracic cavity. Now within the thoracic cavity, it's divided up into smaller cavities. So on each side, we have the pleural cavities. Each pleural cavity contains a lung, all right? Pleura refers to a lung. In the center of the pleural cavities is the pericardial cavity. Remember the word heart or the word part cardi means heart. So the pericardial cavity contains the heart. The, the tricky one here is this whole center between the pleural cavities is called the mediastinum. And that mediastinum contains the heart and the superior mediastinum contains the great blood vessels. So this whole thing is kind of one cavity it's called the mediastinum, contains the heart and the, the blood vessels, like the aorta, the pulmonary vessels. And we kind of divide it into the superior mediastinum, which contains specifically the esophagus, the trachea, um, parts of the aorta, parts of the, um, the pulmonary vessels, the thymus gland, and then the lower part of the mediastinum contains the pericardial cavity. So it's kind of subdivided in there, but this whole area in here is the mediastinum. Okay, so the superior mediastinum and the mediastinum, but I think your book just divides it into simply the mediastinum, okay? Below here is the abdominal cavity. The abdominal cavity contains your organs of digestion, all right? Viscera over here is the term for organs or internal organs, your viscera, all right? So your digestive viscera is just your digestive organs. So your stomach, your spleen, your gallbladder, your intestines, your liver, your kidneys, all your internal organs are contained in the abdominal cavity. The pelvic cavity is the lowest part uh, just below the abdominal cavity. And that contains, it's got the, the hip bones on both sides. 
and the pelvic cavity contains the bladder, the reproductive organs, um, the rectum, um, the ovaries in females, the pelvic cavity is down here at the bottom. Now there's no specific structure that divides the abdominal cavity from the pelvic cavity. So we sometimes refer to this whole area as the abdominopelvic cavity, as one big cavity. Abdominopelvic cavity, we just combine the words, okay? Up here, the structure that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity is the diaphragm. Remember, the diaphragm is our chief muscle of respiration. That's the diaphragm, and that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. All right. But down here, there's really no structure that separates the abdominal cavity from the pelvic cavity. The picture is a little misleading. It looks like there's something here, but there's really not. It's more like an understood line, kind of like the top of your iliac crest, that bone right there. It's just kind of an imaginary line. There's no actual structure that separates those two cavities. Okay, So everything in the front, all those cavities that we just talked about, the thoracic cavity, the abdominopelvic cavity, everything in the front here, these are all anterior to the vertebral column. So we call those the ventral body cavities. They're ventral. Remember, ventral means on the front side. So those are ventral body cavities. Okay. So if you were to get a question like, um, the brain sits in what cavity? And your responses were cranial cavity, vertebral cavity, thoracic cavity, or abdominal cavity, then your response would obviously be the cranial cavity. But if you got a question that said, um, you know, uh, which the following is true, and you said, uh, or you got the, the question, which of the following is true, the brain sits in um, which cavities, um, the, cr the cranial cavity, the vertebral cavity, the thoracic cavity, and the dorsal cavity, you could say the cranial cavity and the dorsal cavity because brain, uh, cranial cavity and dorsal cavity are both correct. All right, so be careful because some of those fall into more than one cavity, okay? So take a look at which organs fall into which, um, which cavity because lungs, for example, will fall into the pleural cavity and the thoracic cavity and the ventral cavity, okay? Um, the stomach will fall into the abdominal cavity, the abdominopelvic cavity, and the ventral cavity. All right, so know where your organs are and then you'll figure out where the, what cavity they fall into. Okay, so here's another picture showing you the layout of the cavities, the, the thoracic cavity, the diaphragm, how it separates the abdominal cavity from the thoracic cavity. All right, that's just another picture. I think that one's from your book, and this is another more simplified one from your book. Um, this one shows you a more simplified picture of that mediastinum, um, the pleural cavity, and the pericardial cavity, and the thoracic cavity. All right. All right, so let's talk about the abdomen, the specific um, quadrants and layouts of the abdominal regions and quadrants. So why do we divide up the abdomen? So the, the abdomen has a whole lot of stuff going on, right? There's a whole lot of organs in the abdomen. There's just a bunch of stuff thrown in there, right? There's so much stuff going on in the abdomen. So dividing the, the abdomen up into quadrants and regions is a way for us, and by us, I mean those who work in healthcare, it's a way for us to um, refer to locations of organs and structures and sometimes pain um, or abnormalities and identify where those are occurring. Because, um, for example, I worked in the ER for a long, long time, almost 20 years. And if somebody came in with abdominal pain, um, it's very difficult to diagnose somebody with abdominal pain. But if you know that most of the time somebody with appendicitis comes in with right lower quadrant abdominal pain because the appendix nine times out of 10 is located in the right lower quadrant, then you kind of get an idea of what's going on if the patient comes in with a specific um, complaint of right lower quadrant pain. So um, dividing the, the abdomen into quadrants is super simple. So I'm gonna highlight this with my little pen here. Right in the middle, we use the belly button or the umbilicus. 
remember we, you're in medical terminology now, so you can't say belly button. The umbilicus is your center point, all right? So the umbilicus is the center point and you just draw straight lines through the umbilicus and you divide the, um, the abdomen into right and left, upper and lower quadrants. Remember, go back to the previous video where I said, always remember it's the patient's right and left. This is really, really important because you have to make sure that you're on the right side and things are where they need to be. So super simple to name it, right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant, right? Right upper, left upper, right lower, left lower. You can also, you can also abbreviate these, right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and left lower quadrant, okay? Um, the abbreviations are standard, so please don't change them to um, RQU, for example, right quadrant upper, or LQU, left quadrant upper. They're, they're standard right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant. Um, so please keep them the same. So they're pretty, pretty simple. The reason we do that, like I said, is because organs for the most part, not 100% of the time, but for the most part, they're located in the same place. So for example, if you look at this picture, we know that nine times out of 10, the liver is located mostly in the right upper quadrant. That means the gallbladder is somewhere around there. So if somebody comes in complaining of excruciating right upper quadrant pain, I'm pretty certain if they're somewhere in their mid 40s and they have fair to light skin and they have a high fat diet, they're probably having a gallbladder attack. Probably, not 100%, but I have a high index of suspicion that they're having a gallbladder attack. Is it 100% accurate? No, but I have a high index of suspicion. If they come in and they have right lower quadrant pain and they're running a fever and they're very tender to touch, I know that their appendix is right down here. Again, high index of suspicion that they may have um, appendicitis. So that kind of gears us um, you know, to what we, what we know because where things are located. Um, again, the spleen is over here. Um, the stomach is cut away, but the stomach is somewhere usually around in here. Um, in females, the, the reproductive organs are low across um, both lower quadrants. Intestines are everywhere, so you could have spasmodic pain anywhere in the abdomen. Um, kidneys usually produce low back pain because they're so far behind everything else. They're way back here. They usually get back pain with kidneys. Um, but again, it just gives us an idea if you know what's located in each of those quadrants. Okay. And now, last but not least, these are regions. So we had four quadrants, but a way to be more specific is to divide the abdomen into nine regions. Now I have to say that we usually use quadrants and maybe one or two regions in practice. We don't use the regions as much as we use quadrants. I don't know why, we just don't. Um, but the regions are not quite as, um, I don't know, they're just not used as much. So again, it's not, it's not difficult to name your belly button, your umbilicus is right in the middle. So you basically take your, oops, that, we just want a little thing right there. The umbilical region, start in the middle, draw a tic-tac-toe board. The umbilical region is right in the center, named for the umbilicus, right? That's easy enough, umbilical region. The other regions you just name going around. So the epigastric region, I'm gonna get my black pen here. The epigastric region, epi means above, or upon. So epi means above or upon. Gastro means, what do you, you remember what gastro means? Gastro means stomach. So the epigastric region, the IC at the end just means pertaining to, so epigastric means above the stomach. Pertaining to above the stomach. So that's easy enough. And then down below you have the hypogastric region. All right, so that's easy enough below the stomach. So epigastric and hypogastric region. Okay, so the epigastric region is really right here. 
sometimes we'll use it. If somebody's having epigastric pain, we kind of almost describe it up in their chest a little bit more. But if somebody's having epigastric pain, um, usually we describe it as somebody who's having heartburn kind of pain. We'll say they're having pain like right in here, maybe up even a little bit higher than that. That's somebody that's having epigastric pain. Hypogastric region, we don't use that quite as much. Um, we might use the term uh, supra pubic. So you can probably guess how that got its name, supra meaning above and pubic meaning the pubic area, obviously. So above the pubic area, um, same region as hypogastric. But your book is asking you for the hypogastric region. So keep that in mind, okay? Um, the inguinal region, inguino means um, groin area. So the left and right, remember this is the right over here and this is the left. So this would be the left and right inguinal region. All right, left and right inguinal region on each side. Now this one gets confusing, the lumbar region. So these are abdominal regions. When we think of lumbar region, we typically think of low back, right? The, and it's named for the area of the back because it corresponds to the lumbar region of the back. I will tell you in practice, if you say that somebody has pain in their lumbar region, immediately we're gonna think of back pain and not the lumbar region of the abdomen. So we've, I've never in 26 years of nursing ever heard anybody describe abdominal pain as lumbar pain. So, but in textbook, this is the difference between textbook world and practice world. Um, those are technically the lumbar um, abdominal regions, but in practice, we don't use that. Just, this is one of those things you have to know for the textbook. And then lastly, the hypochondriac region. Now you've probably heard the word hypochondriac to use to describe somebody who uh, complains a lot or thinks they're always sick. Um, hypochondriac, in this term, hypo means below, right? You know the term hypo means below. Chondro, chondro refers to cartilage, right? You may remember that from the previous video we talked about the knee. Chondro means um, cartilage. So here we're talking about the cartilage of the ribs. Yeah, there you go. All right, cartilage below the ribs. Sorry, I'm still getting used to my new pencil here. All right, so this cartilage here is what we're talking about. All right, so hypo means below, chondro means cartilage. So hypochondriac is referring to below the cartilage of the ribs, right there. Okay. All right, and then again, you have the right hypochondriac region and the left hypochondriac region. And I just realized that that's the wrong thing. That should be a left over there, not a two. Ignore that. I'll get used to my new pencil, don't worry. Later videos will be great. All right, and that's it for the region. So we have four quadrants and nine regions. And I think that's it. So if you have any questions, um, except about my new pencil because I'm not sure about my new Apple pencil, um, that's it. All right. So questions, send me an email, uh, and that's it. And I will try and do better on my next video. All right. Thanks.